How to increase your internet speed, a hardware based approach. This video identifies hardware factors which can impact your broadband speed. Here attention is focused on ADSL and FTTC connections, but this information may also apply to other broadband connections. Distance from the exchange and cabinet. Both ADSL and FTTC are transmitted to your home from the telephone exchange using the telephone network. For ADSL, a copper wired cable connects the exchange to your street cabinet, and for FTTC, a fiber optic cable is used. From the cabinet, both these connections use a copper wired cable to connect to your home. Although this copper wiring is braided and shielded, it can still pick up line noise, especially over long distances. This line noise interferes with signal quality and in turn reduces your broadband speed. As a result, the further you are from the exchange and or cabinet, the slower your final broadband speed will be. Obviously, this is not a factor that can be easily remedied, but your distance from the exchange or distance from the cabinet is important to consider. With this information, you can estimate the speed that your line can potentially carry. This can be done by using the chart shown here, which show estimated broadband speed over line distance for both ADSL and FTTC. For example, if you have an ADSL connection and your distance to the cabinet is 2 km, then your estimated potential line speed for ADSL is 8 megabits per second and 16 megabits per second for ADSL2. Similarly, if you have a fiber to the cabinet connection, and your distance to the cabinet is 0.6 of a kilometer, then your estimated potential line speed is 50 megabits per second. The master socket. The master socket is where the phone line enters your home and it is identifiable by a removable faceplate which hides a test socket. From this socket, you can perform a quiet line test by connecting a phone to the test socket and dialing 17070. It is up to your line provider to guarantee a clear phone line up until this point, so if you hear persistent crackling on the line, you should let them know. Ideally, you should have your modem connected directly to the master socket, as doing so minimizes the length of cable the broadband signal travels through. If you do connect your modem to the master socket, then you should use an ADSL or VDSL faceplate, depending on your connection type. These faceplates contain a built-in filter to isolate the broadband signal at the master socket and prevent it picking up interference from your extension wiring. With one of these faceplates installed, you can do without all your microfilters and connect your other phone line devices directly to an extension or master socket. The ADSL faceplate replaces the faceplate of your master socket and will require a punch-down tool to move any extension wiring onto the new terminals. The VDSL faceplate is backwards compatible with ADSL connections and should be used for fibre connections. It works the same as the ADSL faceplate, but it allows for a wider signal range needed to support a fibre connection. This faceplate fits between the existing faceplate and the backplate. The installation of this faceplate does not require any wiring to be moved, so a punch down tool is not required. Please note that in both cases you should not be touching the wires from the black cable in the master socket. This cable is part of the telephone network and it should not be tampered with. It may not always be possible to have your modem connected to the master socket for various reasons such as the lack of a power point. In this case you should try and minimise the amount of interference in the extension wiring. The most common cause of interference is the bell wire, which is typically the orange-white wire that connects to the terminal 3 of the master socket. This wire was used for pulse dialing systems to transmit the ringing tone, but it is not needed in modern phones and its purpose has become redundant. Unfortunately, this wire can act as an antenna, picking up interference from electrical devices in the household. This can cause connection instability and decrease broadband performance. For this reason, it is recommended to fit an eye plate to the master socket. The eye plate uses a bell wire choke to cut the wire short so that it is not connected to the extension wiring. 
However, it does not have a built-in filter, so you would still need to connect micro filters fitted to your extension sockets. Alternatively, you can simply disconnect the bell wire from within the master socket by removing the wire from terminal 3. The older style master sockets included a surge protector as part of the circuitry, but this has been removed in recent models as it was found to hinder the VDSL signal. If you have one of the older style master sockets, then you may wish to upgrade to one of the newer models. There is some debate on the legality of replacing this yourself, as the master socket marks the termination point of the phone network to your household. However, you can circumvent this by adding the newer master socket as an immediate extension from the older model. The phone cable. Another important factor to consider is the quality of the phone cable that connects your modem to the telephone socket. Most broadband providers include the flat style phone cable with their modem. However, this cable is flawed by design as its parallel wires can pick up interference. Instead, it is better to use an unshielded twisted pair cable, such as a CAT5E or CAT6 rated cable. The twisted pairs in these cables minimise the impact of external interference and thus maintain a better signal. The newer style master sockets can accept both an RJ11 and RJ45 plug. If you have the tools, you can easily make your own cable by crimping an RJ11 plug onto an Ethernet cable. For this, a CAT5E rated cable is recommended, as although a CAT6 cable would offer the best possible connection, its thicker cable makes it difficult to crimp an RJ11 plug onto. The modem. The majority of modems sent by broadband providers as part of their package tend to be pretty good. However, these are usually combination devices which include a built-in router. The router part directs network traffic around your household through Ethernet cables or through the Wi-Fi. However, these types of router struggle with higher levels of network activity and this eventually leads to the device resetting. Therefore, if you frequently perform higher network activity tasks such as transferring large files or streaming local video content, then you may wish to consider investing in a separate modem and router. By having separate devices, the broadband connection will not be affected by network activity in your home. If you do opt to purchase a new modem, then it is best to buy one that matches the chipset of the cabinet you are connected to. If you are connected to an ECI cabinet, like the one shown here, a modem with a Lantic chipset would be best. Alternatively, if you are connected to a Huawei cabinet like the one shown here, then a modem with a Broadcom chipset would be best. An advantage of matching your modem chipset with that of your cabinet is that you'll be able to read additional statistics on your phone line connection. Hopefully the information provided here helps to increase your broadband speed. Please comment below if you have any questions on the information shown here or if you have any suggestions of your own for increasing broadband speed. Also, it would be great to see some before and after speeds from anyone who has successfully increased their speed after watching this video. Thank you for watching.